Good afternoon, welcome to a resplendent Topsham in the West Country sunshine. It's round 10 of Bucks Super Rugby and the fixture carousel has come full circle. There are no mysteries left. Everyone has played everyone once. What remains though is a fascinating second half of the season and both today's home side Exeter and visiting Nottingham Trent will know the importance of starting the second act on the front foot. The sides come into this one today in contrasting fortunes Exeter as the league's leaders with seven wins from eight games and Nottingham Trent who won promotion to Super Rugby with a crushing playoff victory over Bristol early this year at the bottom of the pile with no wins from their eight games. So it's top versus bottom but with one important caveat of course Nottingham cannot be relegated this season and of course neither will any other team due to the three-year moratorium on relegation in place whilst Bucks Super Rugby spreads its wings as a concept. Before we get into today's action then, let's start with a little highlights from Exeter's win over Loughborough in the last round, up in Loughborough on the rubber crumb. They won 17-15 in the end. Well, after Loughborough took an early lead through Max Hill's try, Exeter tried to get back into things through Ted Landry's chip through and Sam Leite dotting down. That one was disallowed though in the end. But it wouldn't be long before Leite was on the scoreboard himself. Just before the half was out, Exeter put in a nice centre field play and Morley's show and go fashion the space for Leite to crash over. Exeter would have been nilled in that half without that score, but after getting it, they had their tails up. James McRae, the next one to cross over after 13 phases. Again from a Sam Leite break, actually. Had a good game. Had a real purple patch either side of the half time. Did uh, Sam Leite and McRae there getting over. Ted Landry, you saw there just going for his conversion. Didn't have the best day with the boots. Loughborough pegged them back or tried to on, on that occasion. They then went through the forwards and got a score of their own. It was a similar one to Exeter's pick and go round them all. One for the purists, very much so, this one. And that got the host back into it. Landry then had a long range attempt right in front of the posts. Again erring though, so it was down to the substitute hooker to dot over himself. Callum Young taking the ball at the back of the mall and notching his fourth try of the season. This try actually makes Callum Young Exeter's top scorer, which isn't bad for your substitute hooker, is it? Landry erring once more. It should be said that the kicking conditions and the conditions in general for rugby were atrocious up in Loughborough. It was a tough old ass to kick in those conditions. In the end, Exeter coming out on top of it, 17 points to 15. And that's what's brought Exeter to this point, the halfway in the season as the league leaders. Now, we've shown the highlights of the last game. We'll have a little look though now at what each team's perceptions and ambitions were for this season when they met back at Twickenham earlier this year. And this video starts off with Exeter's captain Simon Linsell and will be followed on by Nottingham Trent's captain John Hargreaves. I'm expecting year two of Buck Super Rugby to provide the same challenges as last year and even more this year with the expanded league with an extra team. And uh, I think the standard's only going to increase this year with people sort of found their feet last year and realised what a standard it was. So I think it's only going to go through the roof more this year and uh, you know it's going to be uh, another good spectacle hopefully. Last season we, we lost a few players but that's you know the nature of university sport you're always going to lose people to graduation and so we of course we lost a handful but we've got more boys coming through and through the ranks and uh, uh, as I say that's the challenge you face with university sport is getting that conveyor belt of talent. 
uh, going and I think we're doing quite well so far. For university sport as a whole, Buck Super Rugby has only done good things. The exposure uh, with the, with the uh, televised games and the um, you know, publicity around it has shown people that it's a really good standard of sport. Some university students are playing some of the best sport around at the moment, uh, outside of, sort of top flight stuff um, and uh, hopefully that can continue. We haven't really changed anything um, for this coming season. Uh, last season was, was very good, but it, it's a case of more of the same, but we've just got to be better at it. So no real changes. The atmosphere amongst the boys and the, and the club as a, as a whole has been really good so far. Um, you know, EURFC has gone from uh, strength to strength over the last sort of five years or so, and we're trying to keep that upward curve going. So boys are really excited. Competition for shirts is you know, stronger than it's ever been. Um, and there's a really good energy to, to sort of build on last year. I think you can expect to see from Nottingham Trent a fluid brand of rugby. Obviously, with having 14 lads involved with Nottingham full-time pre-season in the Championship, integrating into our squad, I think obviously that's a great addition, complementing our team, and there's a major emphasis on fluid rugby and play with the spaces and just with your heads up. The atmosphere within the change room for going into the new league, to be honest, is excitement. Obviously, since it's new to us, the excitement within the, ch the camp amongst the boys is just like, you just want to get your teeth into it. And obviously, with that first game against Exeter, who are a great outfit on the 29th of September on the Friday night, we're just really looking forward to just front up in that game and play that, so. For Nottingham Trent as a rugby programme, to play in the Buck Super League, obviously, it's a massive achievement. Last year, the boys worked incredibly hard to get to that standard and obviously to be a part of it, it's amazing. So I think we just want to put our best foot forward and just really get our teeth into it and play. What do we expect from Super Rugby? We expect it to be a real tough challenge every week. This is a hard league with lots of very good teams. We expect to see some really exciting rugby because knowing the other teams as we do, there are lots of players who really want to play. We've got a lot of aspirations, but we also expect it off the field to hopefully grow a lot more in terms of the profile it's getting. I think it, I'm not saying we took everyone by surprise last year, but I think it certainly hit the top end of everyone's expectations with the exposure it got and hopefully it goes on from that. Obviously being newcomers into the league, we just want to be competitive within every game that we play. And obviously there's large amounts of emphasis around player development. So I think being competitive every game and developing as a programme on players developing, playing at the top level of University Rugby. John Hargreaves, Nottingham Trent's injured captain. Well, let's have a look at the teams lining up today with about five minutes before kickoff. Starting with Exeter, there is an element of consistency to Keith Fleming's side, isn't there? That's the same team, relatively, who started the season and who played against Nottingham in the second round two months ago. Talent all over the back line and at the front row, just to pick on uh, one. Josh Peters, who a hat-trick scoring loose head is just one example of how much danger there is in this extra team um, but it's at this point which I'm delighted to welcome up to the gantry Alec Knowles um, now Alec uh, you've been running the rule book over uh, the teams before kickoff um, and you've picked out a couple of particularly dangerous players in the extra side uh, yes I have Jack I'm just gonna go through uh, a few of those now we we'll start with the right winger for Exeter Sal Umbuge. Uh he played at the Singer Sevens uh, in the, this summer, he's had three tries this season, and at the <laughs> tournament actually had an 80 metre try against the Saints, so he's going to be lethal on that right wing today. Uh, going to fly half, we've got Sam Morley, uh, he also played in the Sevens tournament in Singer for the Exeter Chiefs, uh, good experience for these young boys here today. Uh, going into the second row, the captain, Simon Linsell, player of the season last year, uh, scored in the reverse fixture against Nottingham Trent. Uh, he's only missed one game this season and also he's bagged himself three tries. But the main guy for Exeter today, uh, I think we both agree, is the magician Ted Landry. 71 points this season so far, 146 points last season. He was in the team of the year and he was also capped by England students against France in April. You know, they did lose 26 15, but experience is experience and that's what, uh, that's what he got there. Yeah, Landry is an institution in Exeter Colours, isn't he? 22 consecutive games for Exeter. I think he's got rocking stats like that. It's uh, an unbelievably impressive player. And um, when, he, uh, when he gets the ball, 
things happen in Exeter Colours, that's for sure. Well, moving on to the visiting side today, Nottingham Trent. Let's have a look at them. And uh, again, Alec, uh, who's, your, who's your money on to impress here? Well, we've got a few academy boys playing today uh, in the Sun 15, notably Max Craven, who uh, was one of the stars of Worcester Warriors Under-18 Academy in 2016. Uh, we also got the number four in the, as a lock, Ben Davis-Moore. He also was an, is an ex-Worcester under 18 player. Um, and in the tight, Jamie Jack, ex-Leicester Tigers Academy. So, a lot of experience. Hopefully, they can get their first win of the season here today. And, uh, yeah, they'll uh, hopefully put in a good performance as we are looking forward to this game that is coming up shortly. Well, um, sort of, they're not travelling at full strength, certainly, Nottingham Trent, uh, not least in the coaching department as well. Neil Folks, their head of rugby, hasn't travelled down here, so the coach, so the side is being led by Alex O'Dowd today. And we've also got news of a late change at 13, uh, which we are just looking to confirm. Catano Branco, who will be slotting in in the outside centre channel with Tommy Collingwood coming in at fullback. So uh, Max Craven moves to the wing uh, and Joe Maskery comes into the centres as well. And as you can see from our pitches, it is an absolute scorcher, amazingly, down here as we end November on a sunny note. It's a month which started with Exeter's first loss in this competition to Leeds Beckett and their selection here today suggests that they do not want to be ending this one on a similar note. They're taking every precaution, they've got all the big guns out and these men in pink entering our picture right now are up against it. But with the competitiveness, the competitiveness rather in this league Alec, it's still set to be a close one whatever especially if Nottingham can show some of that attacking play that they showed back in the start of the season in September So we're under starters' orders here at Topsham. Exeter in the white and green, playing right to left in the first half against the men in pink from Nottingham. So Exeter go deep into the 22 taken up by Catano Branco box comes in from Alex Crocker the number 9 for Nottingham and that's taken by McRae now Jack Rouse looks to power forward he's got the energy of a Duracell battle he has Rouse and he will look to do that all day Landry now lofts the first one over the top ambitious start to this match by Exeter Simon Linsell it was who took that forward and now this is number three Jack Strong Ryu hit hard in midfield that's something Ryu will look to do a lot in defence himself but receiving the same treatment he dished out to Nottingham at the start of the season on himself that, on that occasion. Landry round the back to Thorne. Taking that one there was Leite who scored one last week and had another one denied. Morley now uses that left peg to go beyond Nottingham's fullback Craven.
So a bright starter, Alec, for um, Exeter and Nottingham, though. They've got better field position. They'll be fairly pleased with that. Yes, well, Nottingham are going in as the underdogs, uh, but they will want to have good field position and they want to have possession of the ball. Uh, they've got one of those two at the moment. Uh, they were pushing Exeter back there. Sam Morley, right decision though. Get it out of danger. Well, they're having to get themselves out of a little bit more danger here and doing just that is Josh Peters. Now Rouse again, carrying on the blind side. Aaron Bagwell looks to put the box kick on his return to the starting 15. Well taken in extremely difficult circumstances there. Exeter and Dom Thorne was herring up. Drive forward. It's from Todd Williams. Hands out of the tackle but only into the hands of Exeter and Felix Madison comes away with it. Bagwell does arrive. A little bit late to the party there. That turnover took everyone by surprise. Landry looks for space but goes down a blind alley in the end. Tackle from Broberg. Morley over the top and the mark is called. Similar position here as we were only two minutes ago. Hopefully for Exeter. He'll be looking to uh, do something a bit better here. Line out one. Just the one. And it seems as if Sam Lady is through. He couldn't get it. He couldn't offload it there to Mike Haynes, who was on his right hand side. And it's a knock on. So scrum down Nottingham Trent Ball. Dangerous there by Exeter. They are high scorers. They are high conceders actually. They have conceded on average 24 points per game this season. So it seems as if they are trying to outscore teams. So I think we're going to see a high scoring match. Oh, thank you, Alec. Uh, apologies for the technical difficulties there. And just to clear up a little matter over kickoff. Nottingham's late change was just a straight change in the end and it's number 13 Harry Clemson who's not on the field and replaced by Joe Maskery. There are no other shenanigans in shifting shirts as uh, we originally thought there was. Five minutes in Alec, unless I've missed something I believe this will all be the first scrum. Uh, yes it seems as if this is the first scrum. Uh, it's going to be a big part of the game today for both sides so they're going to want to get a good good scrummage in to open this game up. Well, Nottingham had a little bit of an edge on Exeter at times in the reverse fixture up at Lady Bay earlier in the season. And they draw first blood in the scrum stakes there, winning that free kick. No danger of taking that one quickly, though. Nottingham know that on a day such as this in a bottom versus top clash they need to play the percentages and the territory game as well happy to give possession away on that occasion though clattering hit coming in from number eight Scott Hill Aaron Bagwell felt the full force of that McRae takes a short ball round the side of the rack Bagwell goes over the top and conversely to Exeter's last game against Loughborough where the wind was a real factor, there is hardly a breath in the air here today. It is absolutely perfect conditions for rugby. Better even than what you might find at the start of the season when the ground's hard, the extra softness slightly easing on the bones. Now, coming through the middle was Ryu. Morley, Landry, Exeter's patient game starting to go through the gears here still haven't gone anywhere in the territory stakes though as Madison gets knocked back a 
Lancel knocked back behind the gain line. McRae though does make good yards. And Nottingham turned the ball over. Great defence from them. Patient play as well. They didn't try and put the big hit in. They just met them on the gain line. And they will have a scrum from here. Well, one up to the Nottingham defenders there, uh, Alec. Yeah, not letting Exeter have any easy runs at them there. A uh, few big hits in from the Nottingham Trent forwards. Uh, and actually, it seems as if Mikey Gatehouse is down with an injury. Yes, time off here for Gatehouse. Just on the far hand side of your screen, over where the referee is strolling over to. Well, Mikey Gatehouse, he uh, third start of the season today, and he's back up on his feet. Important for Nottingham with so many changes to the side recently for them to keep players like Gatehouse on the field. Interestingly, Mikey Gatehouse was in the same Quinns under 18 side as Marcus Smith and Gabriel Ibitoye. If anyone watched the highlights of the Premiership this week, they would have seen that stunning try from Gabriel Ibitoye against Bath. It really was quite something. Well, Gatehouse comes from similar stock, so his return to the fold will be welcome for Nottingham. This time Exeter do get the nudge on. They strike back. Nottingham keep the ball though and it's Kitano Branco who took that on. The number 14. Now Craven pops up into the line, the fullback. Great ga ground gain by Nottingham. Back inside and Craven was lurking. The ball came from Tom Miller and just went to ground. So knock on again. Super play and enterprising from Nottingham. Yeah, I think Nottingham have come here with... Uh, they know they haven't won a game all season. We know that. But they're just going to come here. They're going to try and play rugby. And that's what it seems like they're doing at the moment. They're playing without... Well, Exeter have got all the... They're expected to win. So they have got that pressure on them. And Nottingham are just trying to play free-flowing rugby at the moment doing it very well indeed and the set piece tie up as well it's a bit of a seesaw battle in the first eight minutes Nottingham getting the free kick from the first one and Exeter getting the nudge on in that one and now a free kick of their own McRae takes it quickly no dawdling from Exeter they want to raise the pace just as much as Nottingham good yards from McRae such a dangerous runner. Landry's pass though in between his fullback and his winger Thorne. Well, um, there is a lot of Buck Super Rugby on this season, but you don't see too many of those. A mistake by Ted Landry. Those are the kind of signs which if you're looking for an upset, uh, Alec, you take that as a sign that it might be your day. Yeah, he's an influ influential player. And if Landry's off off form, then maybe maybe Exeter will be a two. Hopefully Nottingham will be they'll be praying that he is off form. Well knock on from the line out, so Exeter have the scrum here. Jamie Jack in the pink of Nottingham. Thought he was away for a second. Full fixture list of Buck Super Rugby on today. This is the first of those. Later on tonight, Durham are playing Hartbury. Leeds Beckett are hosting Bath. And Cardiff Met are hosting Northumbria. Northumbria in second position behind Exeter. Cardiff Met in fourth. And there are no easy games in Buck Super Rugby, but particularly going down to King Coyd is tough. I'm 
sure Exeter will be keeping an eye on the result from that one. Um, Josh Peter Peters there, the number one for Exeter, putting pressure on the number three, Ben Smith. Uh, two penalties in a row now. F first for early, early pushing in the scrum, and again, a tight eight here has pushed. Well, it's continuing to push Nottingham Trent back here, and a full arm penalty. Well, super work from the Exeter eight, and Josh Peters at loose head prop, obviously there to do the damage at set piece and well after that first scrum by Nottingham it has really been all Exeter there and Landry pushes play behind Nottingham's 10 metre line George Gosling asked to find his man the hooker from Exeter he's had to share the number two jersey a little bit this season with Callum Young on the bench <coughs> he's once again got the nod and burrows for the ball from the back of that mall Nottingham feeling the squeeze in the tight as extra follow up that excellent scrum with a sturdy mall as well Morley Landry now out to Mbogi has a bit of space on the right hand side stays on his feet well Rouse carries the move forward. McRae was lurking, looking for an offload, but in the end had to ruck it out. Morley, numbers sweeping away to the left-hand side. The call was from Linsell to bring it further out. Morley goes for himself, puts it a fen. That was a little half break from Morley, showing his threat, and Madison carries forward. Leite spinning out of one. Exeter to take the penalty. Nothing North Nottingham could really do to stay with their opponents there. For the first time in a dangerous territory, Exeter put their phase play together and go for the corner as well to try and hammer it home for the first try. Not rolling away there was the call. Uh, I think Nottingham were under the cosh a bit there and I think they would have preferred just to concede three points extra early on here they don't they'd rather a try here they uh, trust it, trusty trusty work in the line out and now they're going for a drive in all Gosling at the back of it once more Exeter up over the line they go can they put it down as well the referee gives it first try to the home side comes through their hulking forward pack they've demolished Nottingham in the first stages at the scrum and they've done it from a driving line out as well there George Gosling with a try the uh, the hooker for Exeter is the sixth start of the season and uh, as we said earlier he is in uh, he's in a battle with Young for the starting hooker position so that it will that will cement his starting position in for the foreseeable future hopefully just checking now if that was seems as if it was Gosling certainly Gosling getting the pats on the back well he's keeping their top try scorer on the bench at hooker Callum Young has four to his name so Gosling will be very welcome for that one Landry's kick well despite there hardly being a wind here at all it goes to the right. Uncharacteristic miss from Ted Landry, but Exeter 5 0 to the good here at Topsham. Lewis Dory goes high into the sun here, taken by Salem Bogey. And Bogey with two recent call-ups to the Exeter Braves in his back pocket. Brought straight back into the side for this one, though. Testament just to how much Exeter are determined not to slip up this season. They 
Finished second in Buck Super Rugby last year to Hartbury. Lost out to Hartbury again in the final at Twickenham in the championship. This is a side who do not want to make the same mistakes twice. And at the moment, Nottingham feeling the full force of their intent. That tackle came in from Ryu. Yet to put in a truly characteristic big hit by the number six, but certainly getting through the work nonetheless. Dory. Ball goes to ground on the far hand side. And Nottingham have no choice but to clear their lines. John Thorne goes long off his left leg. Taken by Dory well. And that goes right down the line. Super kick from Lewis Dory. Well, it's his first start of the season at number 10. He's been on the bench for the past two games. Handed the starting jersey today. And that's a decent touch finder. No Will Sutton for Nottingham today, their top point scorer. Well, their top point scorer from the tee, I should say. As Nottingham take a penalty. So, a nice break for the visitors here. Dory with another chance to pump the ball downfield. And that too looks to... We've gained good distance. Seems as if it was crossing there at the line out, which is the first line that they've lost. It's gone to the captain, Simon Linsell, every time it's been something that they can rely on. But unfortunately, there wasn't the case. And now Not Nottingham Trent are in a good position if they can win this ball from the line out. John Broberg throwing in taken down in the middle and can Nottingham get a rumble of their own on here the ball is with Broberg at the back Alex Crocker the number nine now plucks it from him takes a short line too this is Catano Branco making good yards and Nottingham now carry on through the forwards. Ben Davis-Moore. Now Todd Williams in the number five jersey. Exeter steal it though. Ryu with his hands on it on the floor. And they get the scrum as well afterwards. Well, Nottingham just for a moment with that break by Catano Branco. Had got him behind Exeter, but the first place side in the league did well to recover. Yeah, stolen away by the open open side flanker for Exeter there, Felix Madison. Uh, he'll be really happy with that. That's you know the job of the flanker. He needs to be in those situations to break any type of rhythm they had, and that's what he did there. Madison is uh, such a talented player, part of the famous Dulwich College dynasty, which won three. Nat West School's titles on the bounce as a schoolboy and now impressing in Exeter colours at university level as well. Well, if you're just joining us, a very good afternoon to you, wherever you're watching from. If you're on Unilad, if you're on the Bucks homepage, wherever you are, thanks for tuning in. Extra up and running here a little bit earlier than their host Nottingham, but they've not had it all their own way, certainly. If you want to get engaged with this game, let us know what you think. Use the hashtag Bucks Super Rugby. Let us know where you're watching from, who you're supporting, and what you think of the performance so far. As we see Extra take a free kick. Again from the scrum, so real dominance they're asserting there, Alec. Yeah, going in, uh, going in early before the ref has called it. Uh, I think that might be something the ref will might have a chat with the uh, the front three 
at half time. Calls for forward pass there, not given by the ref. And it was quite a clear forward pass from where we were thinking, but Max Craven has got away with it. So Nottingham continue. Scott Hall with the ball. Crocker digs for it, and they have a penalty of their own there. can see Catano Branco there, the winger coming forward, slapping everyone on the back, geeing up the team they are. Certainly living with Exeter at the moment and after 20 minutes, that will make them feel reassured that they can stay with them for a little bit longer or even take the lead themselves. If you joined us before kickoff, we had a video of their captain John Hargrew saying how their aim really this season is just to stay competitive with sides, look at development, try and breed sides for Nottingham, the Nottingham rugby side that play in the championship who they have strong links with and at the moment they are doing just that despite uh, errors like that one. Unusual mistake there by Alex Crocker he, uh, he's actually in the Nottingham first team squad this season, so a surprising one there. Knock on, and they're back in, back in their own half here now. Yeah, Crocker and the likes of Jamie Jack at Loosehead and Ben Davis-Moore, also in the Nottingham first 15 squad this season. They are missing, of course, a young lad called David Williams, who is the league's top try scorer on the right wing and what a blow it is that he's not here today whereas we see Dom Thorne plough upfield and this could be Exeter's second try. Thorne with the offload, Nottingham did well to get back and now McRae rumbles forward. <coughs> Gosling goes over him and Madison has to tidy up. Morley, now Landry, cut out pass, it goes to Linsell, flick out the back by Linsell. And Exeter do go over, right in the corner. Second try of the game for the hosts. Nothing Nottingham could do to stop the tide this time. Super play and lovely offload out the back by Simon Linsell for Luke Pierre Rieu. Alec, you spotted that one quicker than I did. It was right in the corner of our shot. Ryu getting over the line. Super work from Simon Linsalvo. Yeah, started actually with uh, off the scrum with Landry as the first receiver. Out the back to Morley, the fly half. Uh, they were, were, we thought in the commentary box here that their winger Tom Thorne was going to go over. It wasn't going to be the case. He was dragged down by, I think it was Max Craven, the, the fullback for Nottingham. Uh, but they eventually did go over. Great composure there by Sam Morley. Not rushing anything. Conversion attempt though by Landry, unsuccessful. So 10 points to nil X to lead. And whilst they are good value for that lead, two well constructed piece of play for the tries. They really haven't had it all their own way. They've spent most of the game probably in their half. But they are so clinical when they get into the danger zone. Now Ryu, the try scorer, carries it forward. goes high with the box. Craven came forward. Dory it was who flew the ball in midfield. Crocker finds Dory again. Knock on in contact. Thorne puts boot to ball. An extra herring after this. Branco who goes back. Has a reception party of two waiting for him and now a few more arrive as well. Branco 
does really well on the ground there to keep control of it. Nottingham five metres from the line once more. Crocker with the exit though and the men in pink can be relieved at that one. Super kick and chase from Don Thorne. He weighted that one perfectly. But his opposite man Branco did well in to recover. First uh, big mistake there by Nottingham Trent. They switched off. They had nobody at home and the winger for Exeter, Tom Thorne, he saw that for boot the ball and they were lucky to get out there. Morley round the back and loops one over as well. Salem Bogey does well to pick it up right off his boot laces. Charging over the 22 he goes. Thorne I think it was who was scragged there. Now Gosling. Tackle was from Davis Moore. Madison on the charge just on the right hand side. And Bogey will play scrum half. Jack Rouse stopped on the 22. Josh Peters got a head up of steam there, but Nottingham met him hard. Tom Miller matched James McRae there right on the game line. Dory gets his mitts on Mbogi. Madison round the back to Morley and Exeter not always perfectly precise but they keep playing strong run through the midfield as well this is Rouse numbers away to the right if they can move it they go straight Leite slips the pass through it's another try for Exeter super play phase after phase they went and the dam was burst Let's have another look. It was Leite who slipped the pass through. And I think it may have been George Gosling getting a second there. The hooker. In any case, Landry lining up his third kick. Can he be successful this time? This time he does, and 17-0, X to go to the good. Nottingham just been hit by two tries in rapid fire as we approach the half hour mark. They battled well in those first 20 minutes, Alec, but uh, those two tries, a bit of a hammer blow. Yeah, you did say earlier that X there, they've just been more clinical. Uh, they have been in their half, their own half for uh, the opening 30 minutes or so so territory hasn't been something that they can work on but uh, I'm not I'm not really sure what's going on here with Exeter but they have to got two brilliant hookers in George Gosling and Young uh, George Gosling with his second try there I think they need to teach the uh, they'll be teaching the wingers a thing or two in training this week as we see Bagwell go long and now Craven has an opportunity one of the most talented players in Nottingham side is Craven but that goes straight down the throat of Morley who looks to pick the lock once more carried forward by Thorne Exeter with their tails up here at Topsham strong drives forward Morley round the back to Landry that avenue they go through so often as Leite takes a short line now McRae does what he does best puts his head down Gosling again having a super first half George Gosling Morley spots something offloads Linsell was arriving and on that occasion it amounts to nothing but once again, the immense threat of Exeter, clear to see. 
fly half for Exeter. Sam Morley's taking the ball up to the line two times now. Dan Bigger esque, if you will. It's something he's uh he's testing the inside centre for Nottingham Trent Tom Miller. It's his first start of the season. Maybe that's something they've worked on. Or he's been told by the by the coach Ton Tony Yap. Maybe he's been told take the ball up, pressurise Tom Miller. It's his first start. And uh started there with Tom Miller actually not getting the tackle in. Missed tackles at this level. You just can't have it. Well, I was waiting for the first uh, reference to Welsh rugby from you, Alec, <laughs> and uh, there it was. Uh, yeah. Squeezing <laughs> in a nice reference to Dan Bigger. But certainly Sam Morley playing like he's Dan Bigger today. He's uh, getting so much ball and running the show, allowing Landry to make those looping passes. The extra eight have it at their feet at the moment, and James McRae wants to keep this one rolling forward. Nottingham's scrum capitulates. Penalty right in front of the sticks. And I was about to say that you think they probably will go for another scrum or for touch, but although Landry is arriving, it is to go to touch. So. Exeter hunting the bonus point try already here <coughs> in the first half. Quite a close game uh, the last time these two played the opening game of the season. Exeter won 23-14. But it uh, seems as if Exeter are really taking a grip on this game so far with another driving mall. And they're going close to the line too. Is it Gosling at the back who has it? Bagwell is there as well. Exeter so close here. Knocking on the door for their fourth, and they do get it. Second try, courtesy of a driving mall. Not entirely sure who was on the end of that one. But Exeter flying at Topsham now. Fourth try of the game. They really marmalised Nottingham Trent's pack there, didn't they? Coming into this game, I thought that Ted Landry would be the main man and it would be a more of a backs performance, but so far a lot of, a lot of the tries have come in that bottom left-hand corner of the pitch from off the line out really good performance by the especially the front three the only thing going wrong today is Ted Landry's kicking he hangs his head after that one 146 points last season 71 points coming into today but Despite four tries and four conversion attempts, he's only managed one of them. So just the two for Ted Landry. It's not yet proving his day. It's the day of Exeter's forwards in the first half. High up and under again, right into the Topsham sum. Branco watches it well and now finds Craven, but he has Madison all over him. Tackle from Haynes, the fullback. Driving forward there, Ben Smith for Nottingham. Crocker with a nice box kick, and Morley finds it and finds a patch of shade as well. Bagwell, his scrum half, feeds Rouse, who just keeps on running. Morley's kick is uh, slightly deflected and goes into the arms of Alex Crocker.
Craven back to Dory. Nottingham penned into their own half. So now have notice, notice from Exeter. We'll see again here. High line of defence, all going up as a team. Something Nottingham aren't doing. And uh, there's just no space for the fly half of Nottingham. There was Dory to do anything. Dory has to go back for that. Yeah, that defence, Eric, you're right, is just something else. And a little bit too much for Nottingham to handle. Despite keeping the ball, they are only going in one direction. They fashion a little bit of space out wide, though that was nice play. Nice step out of a tackle as well. Number five, Todd Williams with the footwork. That's a super line too. Tom Miller who offloads to Craven who's now in space. Super breakout from Nottingham. Just over the halfway line they go. Jamie Jack carrying that one in. Dory has to stretch for it but does well. Joe Maskery carrying that one into contact and stolen on the floor though by Mike Haynes who puts a chip in. He has Bagwell with him. Haynes going after this. Who will get there first? Nottingham do just about recover. Super defence from the visiting side. It had to be. Great steal from Mike Haynes on the floor. I was just about to, I was just about to even praise Nottingham keeping the ball for a bit there. They uh, they had a really good passage of play there. I think the ref has changed the decision from touching the ball down to actually that it was held up. Well, possibly I think uh, not letting his uh, his opponent play the ball may have been the call. But they haven't found touch, so Thorne has a chance to run into open space himself, the left wing. So many options, goes himself. Morley goes round the back, Landry once more. This time the chip forward is for Umbogi, who collects it. Speculative pass round the back, doesn't work out. But Exeter again though, take it away and Leite drives forward. Landry, Morley, this is Madison, now Josh Peters looks for the break himself, the loose head prop and offloads back to Madison. It's an exhibition stuff from Exeter and particularly the Exeter forwards. Super outside break from Peters and then Madison right on hand to go in for the fifth try. Great follow-up play there by Madison. He saw that Peters was through. He sti sticked with him and he's been awarded with a try. Josh Peters uh, actually had a hat-trick against Durham at Roslyn Park. He may have thought he could get himself on that score sheet. Not to be though, but Exeter really pulling away with this one. Four minutes before the end of the first half. Landry goes straight and true and that'll be it for the first half. The first half absolutely dominated by the hosts. Exeter University have scored five tries to Nottingham Trent's zero tries. And it has been all through the forwards as well. Two tries we think from George Gosling. Not always easy to see at the bottom of those malls. One from Luke pierre one from Felix Madison as well. 29-0 at half-time. You 
can hear the roar from inside the changing room. There's 5,000 odd people cheering you on. It's, it's so hard to put into words. Lots of the guys that come to Exeter do have serious rugby aspirations. The ones that have the talent and the drive and the desire to become a professional player, we have a formal link between the Chiefs and the university. But it, it's tough, hard work. You have to be able to drop into a professional environment and be able to hold your own. They have to be physically strong enough. They have to be mentally switched on enough. For the uni students, it's a, it's a real opportunity for us. So you get Chiefs players who coach the uni, and if you're playing well or, or they think that you're what they need, then they might invite you to training. You just get these small opportunities now and then, and if you take them, then it's a, it's a genuine opportunity there. The experience um, playing my first match for the Chiefs was incredible. It was a really strong Chiefs side, and I was, I was buzzing to even have been named on the bench. The next minute I'm kind of warming up on the pitch and and next minute I'm on the pitch and you know I was just trying to just trying to do what I could like you know I really enjoyed it. It was an incredible experience and I just hope that there'll be some more to come. A lot of premiership clubs around England uh, actually look towards the university clubs to kind of scout young players. Um, and yeah, we've got a couple, two or three players actually that have come to Exeter University with no affiliation to the club and, uh, and hopefully picked up contracts post university, which is great and obviously kind of a great um, reason for people to, to go to university and actually still have an opportunity to play premiership rugby. The link between Exeter University and Exeter Chiefs is very good. So a lot of our guys from the uni come and help with training when there's numbers down, but we're also looking for guys that probably haven't been picked up with the academies and, and a real success story this year is that we've got, um, we've got three players that have been at the university are graduating in the summer which is Pete Laverick, Tom Laude and Jack Howlett have all got senior academy contracts with Exeter Chiefs and I think it's, it's a real good opportunity for, for the club to pick up some, some good quality players that, that have missed out and it's also a good opportunity for them to carry on doing their degrees um, and have that opportunity to you know, pursue a, a professional rugby contract. I absolutely love Varsity Day here because there's obviously a great buzz, great atmosphere and, uh, and you're playing also in front of, you know, on, on this real awesome pitch, awesome stand, so it's just great to just be a part of it really and take on the emotions. Two or three other of my friends have been signed as well from the Uni Two Chiefs. Um, so it's, it's really great that we're all doing it together and we've played in teams the last two years together. You know, it just shows the opportunities that, that are there with University Rugby, especially here. You're breathless till other voices drown. Well, welcome back to Topsham here at half time between Exeter University and Nottingham Trent. It was an incredible first half from an Exeter perspective. Five tries in all. They lead 29 points to nil. Four of those tries coming through the forwards and uh, one through an honorary forward or at least a forward, half a forward, you might say. Aaron Bagwell, the number nine. Alec Knowles, uh, you're a long mind me and uh, enjoyed the first half as much as I did from the neutrals perspective of course and it was exhibition stuff at times. What has their success so far been, been laid on 
in your eyes? Well, two main things I uh, I noted down during that first half. The first is the front three. They've been so dominant in for, well, the for Exeter. Sorry, the uh, the front, front three being Josh Peters, George Gosling, and Jack Strong. Yes, and they've been instrumental in this with uh, going in at a half, winning. Uh, in the scrum, they've been dominant. In the line out, they've been dominant, and more on more than one occasion, there have been tries from a driving mall. That's something they may have worked on uh, with Gosling getting two tries. Another thing. I'd like to add is fly half Sam Morley and inside centre Ted Landry there. They're almost swapping positions sometimes, you know, they're not being fixed at inside centre and fly half. They are interchanging, almost as we see with Slade and Steenson for Exeter, albeit S Slade and Farrell for England at international level. So maybe that's something Warren Gatlin, I know from a Wales perspective, he has spoken about that's the way rugby is going with two playmakers on the pitch and maybe that's something that Tony App, Coach Rex, that has tried to bring into, uh, into their game. Well certainly uh, it's uh, looking like a, a tried and tested and proven formula. Certainly doing them very well today so far. Landry particularly, we mentioned how he's having an off day with the boot. He's certainly not having an off day out of hand distributing all over the shop and they're not always going to hand are they but they're always going in exactly the right direction and whether a mistake comes in or whether it does go perfectly as planned, it doesn't seem to much matter at the moment. The result's the same. Exeter going through the phases and getting over the try line at the moment. How, in your eyes, and Alec, uh, for Nottingham to get back into this, um, how, uh, where do you think they can do that? I think they need to go back to the basics, actually. They need to come up, as Exeter have been doing, they need to be coming up as a line in defence. They need to... I've seen Dory, he's, uh, he's had a few kicks for touch that haven't gone out. Maybe that's something they could build a platform from. So yeah, really the basics they need to start doing and they obviously need to start getting that scoreboard ticking over. Yeah, well, uh, they've got a few debutants in the side as well and number 10, you mentioned uh, Lewis Dory in his first start um, and having to replace Will Sutton who is Nottingham Trent's customary fly half he's uh, not had a bad game though uh, 10 in difficult circumstances and most of it's been on the back foot of course but there's been a few flashes of, uh, of nice play and uh, kicks to touch particularly that have looked quite strong yeah especially in the opening quarter an hour of this game they were well they were the better team I think we both said that uh, at the start of our commentary uh, he has been under pressure though from especially the open side for Exeter Felix Madison and when as a fly half when your forwards aren't winning the game at the breakdown it's very hard to build anything off well we'll shortly be back underway here for the second half and if you did miss the first half you missed running rugby in the sun at its finest from Exeter five tries they racked up and they lead 29-0 overall and do let us know where you're watching what you're thinking and who you're supporting as well thanks for your comments we'll post them up on screen use the hashtag bucks super rugby and there's a uh, a plug for you there alec um yeah well. one of my one of my many fans i think uh no a good friend of mine and he uh he is he is uh enjoying this our commentary as I hope many are out there well exactly the kind of uh, engagement we like here <laughs> Carl Roberts uh, Carl Roberts Moose I believe website coming out tomorrow so Exeter coming back onto the pitch it's not the uh, roaring attendances which we've seen at other Super Rugby games so far this season this match kicking off a little bit earlier difficult one for fans and uh, fellow players and teammates to come down but a lovely setting nonetheless as Nottingham Trent make their way back 
playing slightly into the sun in the second half. Facing, playing against the number one side in the league at the moment. Next to to top the table. Second place are Northumbria who are playing later tonight. They are a super side and they have one goal in mind this season, Exeter. And that is to win Bucks Super Rugby and the championship at Twickenham as well. Nottingham's start to the half a little drab with that kick not going 10 metres. We'll have a scrum on halfway to start us off. The opposite start, I think, head coach for Nottingham, Alex O'Dowd, would have wanted there. They would have wanted to get a bit of confidence, get a bit of ball in hand. Uh, and straight from the off, they've started in the, the second half as they finished with the first. Not on the front foot. Well, Alec, will we see the same scrummaging dominance from Exeter that we saw in the first half? Bagwell feeds and Nottingham do go backwards, but hold it in the end. Bagwell to Morley. Morley finds some space on the left-hand side and now this is Landry who puts in a chip. This is meant for Thorne who's chasing after it. Gets a hand to it. Nottingham have to go back and clear up and they do. Just about. Just about get away with that one. Exeter. One minute into the second half and they're already looking for a sixth. We'll have a scrum five metres out to restart. Started again there with Sam Morley running at inside centre Nottingham. Tom Miller, something we saw on more than one occasion in the first half and if it works for them in the first half, they're just going to continue to do it, run down that channel and hopefully extend this lead. Well, if you're watching this Buck Super Rugby coverage power powered by Rugby Vertical, do engage with us if you fancy, hashtag Buck Super Rugby. Let us know what you think of the match and ultimately how good Exeter are. That's really the only talking point at the moment. As they get a creak on, edge towards Nottingham's line once more. Goes round the back, Morley. This is Haynes cutting a nice line from fullback. Rouse carries it forward, the lock forward, goes close to the line as well. Linsell, his partner in the second row takes it on now supported by Ryu four or five tries in the first half coming from the forwards Jack Strong who carried that around the ruck Nottingham's defence manfully standing up to Exeter here for now. Meeting them hard, just keeping them away from that five metre line, giving themselves five metres of cushion to work with. But now Exeter creep forward again. Gosling to Linsell. Forwards, the forwards head over to the left hand side. Phase after phase they go, Exeter won't worry a bit. The patient play is part of their style and they keep picking and going. James McRae scored from similar situations last week and Linsell goes close, it pops out. Thorne was there, but knock on in the process. Well, Nottingham have done mightily well to stop that one. Yeah, a bit of luck there for Nottingham. You know, if they want to get back in this game, that's something they do need is luck. They also need ball and I, I think it seems as if they may have it here at the scrum. Play down at the moment though. Well, we've got some time off whilst the Nottingham player receives treatment. There just doesn't seem to be much you can do, Alec, to stop Exeter when they pick and go like that and keep the ball so well. Yeah, actually, yeah, there was an overlap with the, uh, with the Exeter back, so... A little bit selfish, but you know, for good reason. They have, they have really controlled this game, and maybe they thought, you know, we can go over, for, we can go over here again. But there was, 
there was an overlap and Salah Mugge was uh, he was calling for it well, time is back on and Exeter can they work their dominance once more it's going not to be Nottingham's ball the new scrum half on is Harry Graham Graham going backwards though but Nottingham take the penalty Lewis Dory edging Nottingham out of their 22. Not his best kick of the match. He showed himself to have quite a boot on him in the first half. But playing into the wind slightly kept that low. Ball taken at the back of the line. Jacob Rafter tidied up well by Nottingham here too this is Jack again quite amazing the speed of the defensive line for Exeter we'll see we'll see again here it's as if they're going out for 100 metres start out of the blocks all rushing up as a team big pressure on Nottingham as there was during the first half. Craven, who's smothered by Exeter's defenders, edge closer towards Nottingham's line. And Nottingham just have to put boot to ball, nothing else they could do there. Mike Haynes won't be able to take that one quickly. But they are at least momentarily out of their half and if you are to put a positive spin on things for Nottingham Alec you'd have to say that they haven't conceded at the start of the second half and yeah I was to be uh, cheered yeah I was just about to say that, that they actually haven't conceded but they haven't scored either they haven't had a lot of ball and they have been pinned back in their own half so nothing much going their way at the moment another driving more off the line out here for Exeter with Felix Madison I think has the ball at the back Bagwell little dummy and finds Morley who shows a bit of exhibition stuff through the legs now Salem Bogey who knocks on this is Miller knock on that time from Jamie Jack extra on the charge once more Landry Morley's kick was impeded by a foot and uh, it's Landry who does the dirty work tidying up McRae ever ready to carry forward Exeter's number eight in the blue scrum hat Bagwell goes deep and Craven plucks it out of the afternoon sky this is Branco staying on his feet well the right winger Dory flat pass out to his number eight well that looked perhaps a little bit harsh it was flat from our perspective up here in the gantry but the referee was on the spot and thought it had gone forward and things don't get any easier for Nottingham as uh, Exeter ring the changes as well number 19 Rory Lorimer is on
Talented Sevens player Rory Lorimer has picked up the Roslyn Park School Sevens title with his school Marlborough College back in 2014. Looks to be packing down on the open side. You can see there how tight the uh, bait forwards there of Exeter. They really can't get much tighter. And that's uh, with a dominant scrum, you need your tight eight to be tight, you know. And it worked there. Full arm penalty. They're going to go for the corner. Hopefully get that driving mall working again. Morley's kick to touch is a very good one as well. So Exeter hunting a third try from a driving mall perhaps here. Gosling still on the pitch. There's Callum Young on the bench. No doubt desperate to make it onto the pitch. He's just seen Gosling run in for two tries and he may be fancying the open spaces out there today at Topsham. Gosling asked to take it again. Taken by Rouse. Gosling once again at the back. Hunting a hat trick, the hooker. Exeter burrowing forward. Nottingham bring it down and it keeps going though. Rouse is pulled to the floor. Bagwell has to dig for it. And the referee gives a penalty to the home side. And we'll go for it once more. This time it's Linsell at the back. And the same setup from the hosts. Gosling has it. Nottingham doing a good job to halt it initially. Bagwell's in there as well, acting as another forward. Extra over the line, and they get there. The second half starts in the same fashion. Extra first on the scoreboard in the second 40. And Alec, if you saw who got that down, you've got sharper eyes than me. Seems as if that was... May have been Gosling. And if it is, that is his hat-trick. It was Gosling. As his teammates come to congr congratulate him. Not something every hooker can say, Jack. Well, a hat-trick for Gosling. Not, you're right, but in the Exeter team, that just draws him level with his loose head colleague, Josh Peters, who, as you mentioned earlier, Alec, had a hat trick against Roslyn Park earlier in the season. George Gosling with his hat trick. Maybe a bit of a headache scenario for Tony App, the coach of Exeter, for next week with uh, two outstanding hookers in the squad. So it uh, be interesting to see who he selects to start for next week. Both high scorers and both good at the line out. McRae takes it in. Yes, the motivations for players and coaches do change slightly now in the extra camp. They have their next match against Northumbria, which could well be a first faces second encounter, depending on Northumbria's results tonight. That's up at Kingston Park, and that could well be decisive in how Buck Super Rugby does end come March time. Players now fighting for places in that match just as much as fighting the scoreline to be increased against Nottingham here. Good charge down by Nottingham and almost regathered by Miller. That was almost very sweet play from the inside centre.
So the man who had that kick charged down is the new scrum half on, Edward Hoochin. Started a week ago against Loughborough, but preferred behind, preferred from the bench rather, and Bagwell chosen instead of him for this game. So after that hat-trick, uh, Alec, Gosling has been called to a halt by his coaches and Callum Young is now on the field. Seems as if he's emptied the tank, I think, in, this, in the minutes he has played. And why not? They seem as if this win does seem quite comfortable for them now. Rest him for next week. Huchin asks his forwards to keep the rumble going. Landry, perfect passing right on a plate. For Max Himry, that was the number 21. Nottingham turn over the ball. And have a chance to run at a slightly disorganised extra defence, which is about as good as it's going to get against the home side today, you feel. Salem Bogey, who bides his time picking the ball up and then does very well to get out of a couple of tackles. Playing with fire slightly until that point, the right winger. Exeter, consummate skills in tight spaces to work away. Almost out of their 22. Young picks the ball up. Huchin back to Landry. Craven gathers that one well. Graham it was who offloaded from the floor and Branco who's done well in extremely difficult circumstances in the first half. No space at all and he's always manages to at least slip out of one tackle. Davis Moore. Graham again. Dory, who decides to chip in the end. Most of his chases were offside, but referee waves play on. And this is Mac Maskery who was after that. Graham now picks it up. Scored a try off the bench last week. Joe Maskery who collected that. Good chip in the end by Dory, but it didn't seem to be the original plan. No, um, I think I, I have seen that in the last two phases of play now. No, uh, no s real structure as such, especially in terms of the back line. And uh, yeah, it did seem that that wasn't his original plan, but Dory was forced to uh, counter the high line of Exeter's backs with a trip over the top. Almost came off them, but once again, luck was not on their side. And if you are just joining us this afternoon on the live stream, the scoreline tells really the story of the game. Exeter have been in com complete control so far. Six tries in all overall. Nottingham Trent being outclassed by the top side in the league here. Trent's the bottom side in the league in ninth position, but saved from relegation possibility. They'll be still be here next term, whatever. Buck Super Rugby ring fencing relegation for now for a couple more seasons. For sides like Nottingham, it is about development, it is about trying to be competitive, getting used to what the standard is like in this league. And they may have qualified for Buck Super Rugby with an impressive playoff win last year. 
last season rather earlier this year beating Bristol over two legs but it is a different matter coming down to Exeter and trying to compete with the standard of play that they deliver week after week another excellent line out set from the home side Callum Young now at the back Huchin who tries to get the ball off his forwards and has to go into the mall to do that and he gets sucked in so Nottingham spoiling that one well Huchin to Ryu one of the try scorers in the first half now this is strong Landry took it very deep but has Haynes outside him and Bogey oh heavy contact on the far side Nottingham still putting the hits in this is Ryu again Huchin McRae who didn't look like he wanted that ball much he was took it stationary so passed it on pretty quickly afterwards and now Nottingham do line up number 18 Charlie Morgan felt that Haynes though has a bit of space goes through Dory pushing and probing at every soft spot that they think they can see in Nottingham's defence this is Leite so far the pink wall holding up over the ball was Scott Hall there slowing things down but giving away a penalty in the process not rolling away in the tackle is the decision and again for the umpteenth time it seems like today Alec uh, such impressive play from Exeter not much Nottingham can do but give away a penalty no and as well not surprising the Landry he marched over there he took the ball off Simon Linsell is captain he knew where that ball was going to into the corner wouldn't be surprised if we see another try here Young it is who throws in but that time it not going straight Nottingham saved from the inevitable you suspect on that occasion do get some wonderful colours at this time of year don't you and I'm not just talking about Nottingham Trent's pink jerseys it is a stunning afternoon down here at Topsham new man on Adam Castle number 22 taking his place in the back line Graham feeds the ball Nottingham going backwards though Exeter get the squeeze on penalty though to the visitors the referee not happy with the technique on that occasion of Exeter's front three yeah they wheeled the scrum there uh, I'm not too sure why they have they've been so dominant in the scrum I don't know why they would have given a silly penalty like that away well spotted by the ref and Bogey finds the new man on Kieran Kelly McRae drives forward finds a little bit of space he's eats up the yards does James McRae Will Cutbilt on the charge there too Landry pulls it back for Haynes Rory Lorimer in support now this is Rouse round the back to Mbogi Hembry tried to get the ball out of the tackle there
Nottingham keep coming up, keep trying to put the hits in. But the ball, Rouse does take it forward and this could be a try for the big lock. Super tackle in the end by Nottingham to get back. Just open up for Jack Rouse. Landry, Kelly and Bogey slips it back but forward in the process so many opportunities there for Exeter to score it's amazing they didn't and full credit to Nottingham for holding them at bay then yeah they are I think they have adopted the tactic of Exeter with that high line and at times that they do do it Exeter don't, don't have an answer maybe that's not sure if that's a fitness issue that they haven't done that throughout the game thus far not too sure on that one but it's something that's worked for Exeter as shown by the scoreline well Nottingham probably the worst thing they want right now is another scrum their line out's been pretty good but the scrum they've really suffered save for that first free kick they won right at the start of the first half from the scrum it has been the green machine which has been moving forwards Graham does get the ball back though there Hall did well at the base of the scrum missed pass though and that will go out of touch there was an instant where Rob Waldron felt like he may have had a bit of a chance against his opposite man but imprecise pass from Joe Maskery Young with the throw in this time he finds his man but once again blocking or at least another reason for a penalty to go against Exeter Callum Young it's not going his way since he's come on that time nothing to do with him but that would have been an opportunity for another try you fancy and those mistakes weren't happening when George Gosling was on Nottingham take play up just before the halfway line Collingwood's throw is good and Nottingham can set off Craven is now playing at fly half and that was a huge hit in midfield on his runner the man coming up from that tackle unsurprisingly is Luke Pierre-Riu put in so many big hits up at Lady Bay when Nottingham Trent hosted Exeter that was another one but this time the referee penalises him for it first time in this half I think Jack is it that they've been so close or so pegged back Exeter in their own half almost back in their own 22 hopefully for both Nottingham Trent and for a neutral's perspective Nottingham Trent can get something here and uh, as I alluded to at the start of this game Exeter have conceded 24 points a game on average this season so it's unfamiliar territory that they are they haven't conceded so far in this match and you suspect that keeping their opponents from scoring is high on the priority list now six tries to the good up keeping a clean sheet in defence will be another impressive statistic to tick off from this game especially ahead of their 
encounter against Northumbria next week. Graham that was who was fighting forward the substitute scrum half. This is Maskery. Graham again. Show and go was from Ben Smith. Broberg. Jamie Jack this time. Nottingham's front row getting their hands dirty in a search of their first try. But Exeter's defence putting the squeeze on and seizing on that mistake to push the visitors well back into their own half. Umbogi lets this one bounce and regathers well. Dory is back to collect it. And that's a nice little touch finder to give his team a breather. Well, Nottingham, they're not giving up, are they, Alec? Uh, tough ask in this second half, given what we saw in the first, but it's only been one try against them, and uh, they can console themselves with that, keeping a better defence in this second 40. Yeah, they have had a better defence, but maybe, well, not, not in this instance, but... They haven't done so well attackingly, quite poor, to be honest. And uh, maybe, you know, they do, if they did have any ambitions on getting back into this game, there are only 10 minutes, less than 10 minutes left now, so those must have faded. But if they wanted to, then attacking play is what they needed and attacking play isn't what they've, what they've been doing or doing well anyway. in familiar territory deep in their own half that run to try and get out of a tight spot was by Catano Branco and now this is Graham making sure his guards are in place but that not making touch Haynes the fullback cuts in field and puts in a couple of offloads as well this is nice running from Mike Haynes and that is his try as well Lovely counter-attacking rugby from Mike Haynes. Tired bodies in the Nottingham Trent defence. And Haynes able to swap them away. Yeah, fourth try this season, four full by Mike Haynes. Very impressive footwork. Uh, Dog-legged defence though by Nottingham forwards. Uh, and their heads are, some of those heads are hanging behind that goalpost now. Something uh, familiar territory as you said. Uh, but yeah all credit to Mike Haynes there very very good play he saw, he saw a few forwards in front of him saw a gap went for it dotted down Landry successful with the conversion. 43 0. Exeter go up. Well, wherever you're watching this live stream, thank you for joining us. If you're on Unilad, if you're on the Bucks website, let us know what you think if you can. Hashtag Bucks Super Rugby. Let us know what you think of this extra side. And Yes, they are playing the bottom in the league, but how impressive is it to have racked up 43? Seven tries in all for no return from the visitors. Branco. Ducks the a tackle from Haynes and gets up again. hit very hard 
was Ben Smith there. Penalty for not rolling away though against Exeter. So Dory nudges one deep into Exeter's half. Good kick again from Dory on his first start for Nottingham Trent in Buck Super Rugby. They'll certainly be hoping for easier rides in subsequent games, you expect, Lewis Dory. This one has been a testing trial. Nottingham's line out imprecise. Jack has to go down on his Exeter opponent and take him to the floor. Landry's kick downfield is down the throat of Katana Branco. Callum Young putting in a hit, the hooker. And Trent have to go again. Ben Davis Moore. Graham to Smith. Graham again. Looking for space and finding a little bit in the shape of Jacob Wafter. And now a little bit more space opening up for Nottingham Trent. Graham on the charge once more. Collects his own kick. Ball taken off him by Sam Leite. Excellent defence from the outside centre. Just as Graham was thinking he may have had another individual score following up from last week. Extra back on the charge. But penalty goes to the men in pink. Well, a little bit of respite there and uh, good play from substitute scrum half, Harry Graham. Yeah, he has tried to add a structure to this game, something that Nottingham have been lacking. But uh, yeah, great individual play there by by the substitute Graham. Uh, he scored against Durham with a tap and go in uh, one of the earlier games this season so you know he knows he knows what to do with the ball in his hands also I'd just like to add that Branco the uh, the right winger for Nottingham he's been a live wire one of the few players who's in my opinion anyway really stood out for Nottingham Trent today yeah Branco he's got an interesting running style it's not necessarily so orthodox but it covers the ground quite quickly Whatever works, it seems, Drac, for Branco. But it hasn't worked, which is uh, which is the problem today. Well, at least not, not on enough occasions, anyway. Time is off here whilst a few injured bodies are replaced. Collingwood finds his man on the far side and... Nottingham tie things into them all. Can they get on the score sheet before the 80 minutes is up? It would only be consolation, of course, but against an Exeter side this good, it would still be quite an achievement. Dory switches play. Finds his inside centre, Miller. And once more, Nottingham have the penalty. Dory only looking to go to the corner. Only one thing could really make Nottingham feel better, and that will be breaking the duck. It is a shame for Nottingham that they've had to travel here without some of their frontline players. Stars such as David Williams, their right winger, who was such a thorn in the side of Exeter at Lady Bay, scoring two tries, two absolutely stunning tries as well. But they do get a rumble on the men in pink. Edging towards Exeter's line. Can they get over it as well? They do and it will be a penalty try. Reward then for Nottingham Trent's industry in this second half. Yeah, that drive home won't seem as long 
for Nottingham now. Uh, was quite surprised actually they didn't they didn't get everybody in there, including the backs. A uh, bit of confusion here in terms of Hexter looking to take it quickly. I think that was Kieran Kelly who fancy pulling a fast one. Branco. Little goose step goes the right wing and again makes good yards. Carried on by Wafter. Scrum will go to Exeter though on that 22. <laughs> well, before uh, they took the tried to take the quick uh, kick off, Alec, you were pointing out about Nottingham's uh, Nottingham's drive home. Yeah, I was a bit surprised they didn't. It was yeah, it was quite obvious that they were going to try to push over there. I was a bit surprised that they didn't get a few of the backs involved, but they didn't need to. They had the penalty try, and uh, yeah, as I said, it won't seem. It, it is a consolation try, but something they can build on at least for next week. Landry goes himself. Crossing though. There were all sorts of extra players running different lines and as Landry held on to it. Well, looked like crossing could have been called there again. Accidental offside against Nottingham that time. Well, comedy of errors from both sides. Exeter in search of their eighth try and the 50 point mark as well if it was converted I mean that Ted Landry directs his forwards towards another driving line out taken in the middle of the line Nottingham looked to try to have not engage with Exeter there to create an offside but um, hasn't worked so Young has it at the back Exeter do get on the score sheet once more and is it Callum Young to come up with it the substitute hooker And looks like it could well have been. Yeah, Callum Young, it does look like it was. He's no uh He's not shy of a try. The uh the bench Well he'll have a wry smile on his face because he's had to watch George Gosling score a hat trick in the number two jersey and it's not gone his way what since he's come on in terms of the lineup. There's been problems there, but Callum Young does get his fifth try of the season. So Landry for the 50 point mark. <laughs> Keeps his head down and he knows it goes straight and true. Exeter hit the 50 and they've hit Nottingham Trent for eight. Eight tries in all finished off by Callum Young there. The bottom place side outplayed by the top played side here at Topsham. Tough day's work for the men in pink indeed. They'll be going back to Nottingham Trent tonight. Running the Rue over Exeter and just how good they were. So um, just as we watch the players shake hands and head for the baths, Alec, um, 
don't know if you've managed to have a thought about man of the match, but uh, who particularly impressed you? Uh, I'm going to pick the team for you, Exeter, if that's all right. But uh, anyone within that? Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's not a bad start there, Jack. Uh, well, Sam Morley has actually played very good at fly half. He's taken the ball up to the line quite a few times. He's bossed the attack. But I don't think we could give it to anyone else but the hooker, George Gosling. A hat-trick of tries today. Not a lot of hookers can say that, especially in such a such a tough league as this is. But, yeah, you're outstanding. And especially, not just the tries, but taking the ball up from uh, off the ruck. Brilliant scrimmaging and brilliant line-out throwing. So, well done to him. Yeah, three tries from George Gosling. And those three just three of the six which were scored by forwards overall just two from Exeter's backs although it did if you watched the full 80 minutes you would have just seen how Exeter's backs just as much as their forwards were to thank for their scores but in the end the score is coming from numbers one to eight and it was a mightily impressive all-round all-court game from Exeter University they march on their next match against Northumbria at Kingston Park on the 8th of December and for Nottingham Trent their next match will be against Cardiff Met on the 6th of December next Wednesday at Lady Bay and that'll be a 3.30 kickoff. and do join us for that one that'll be our live stream game as we follow Nottingham Trent particularly towards the end of this year's action in Bucks Super Rugby powered by Rugby Vertical thank you very much for joining us here at Topsham have a very good afternoon